as the Senate prepares to vote on the $800 billion stimulus and recovery package today, President Obama urged Congress to pass the bill Monday, first at a town hall meeting in Elkhart, Indiana, and later at the first news conference of his presidency. He warned that not acting immediately to rescue the economy could lead to a catastrophe and emphasized only the government could bail out the economy at this moment. Anyone out there who still doesn't believe this constitutes a full-blown crisis, I suggest speaking to one of the millions of Americans whose lives have been turned upside down because they don't know where their next paycheck is coming from. And that is why the single most important part of this economic recovery and reinvestment plan is the fact that it will save or create up to four million jobs, because that's what America needs most right now. It is absolutely true that we can't depend on government alone to create jobs or economic growth. That is and must be the role of the private sector. But at this particular moment, with the private sector so weakened by this recession, the federal government is the only entity left with the resources to jolt our economy back into life. President Obama's news conference came just hours after the stimulus bill advanced in the Senate by a vote of 61 to 36. Three Republicans and two independents joined 56 Democrats to move the legislation forward with a vote on final passage expected later today. The Senate bill differs substantially from its counterpart in the House, and the two versions will have to be reconciled before Obama can sign the legislation into law. With a stimulus package receiving little Republican support, Obama repeatedly brought up his concerns around partisanship and, quote, ideological opposition to a federal spending plan. Some of the criticisms uh, really are with the basic idea that government should intervene at all in this moment of crisis. I mean, you have some people, very sincere, who philosophically just think that government has no business interfering in the marketplace. Uh, and in fact, there are several who suggested that FDR was wrong to intervene back in the New Deal. They're fighting battles that I thought were resolved a pretty long time ago. What I've been concerned about is some of the language that's been used suggesting that this is full of pork and this is wasteful government spending, so on and so forth. First of all, uh, when I hear that from folks who presided over a doubling of the national debt, uh, then uh, you know, I just want them to not engage in some revisionist history. I inherited the deficit that we have right now and the economic crisis that we have right now. The question I, I think the American people are asking is, uh, do you just want government to do nothing, or do you want it to do something? If you want it to do something, then we can have a conversation. Uh, but doing nothing, that's not an option from my perspective. Although there are some politicians who are arguing that we don't need a stimulus, there are very few economists who are making that argument. I mean, you've got economists who are advising John McCain, economists who were advisors to George Bush, one and two, all suggesting that we actually needed a serious recovery package. And so when I hear people just say, uh, we don't need to do anything, this is a spending bill, not a sp stimulus bill, without acknowledging that, by definition, uh, part of any stimulus package would include spending, that's the point, then what I get a sense of is, is that there's some ideological blockage there that needs to be cleared up. Highlights of President Obama's discussion of the economy at his first news conference last night. I'm joined now from Austin, Texas, by economist James Galbraith. He's a professor of public affairs and government at the University of Texas, Austin. His most recent book is The Predator State, How Conservatives Abandoned the Free Market and Why Liberals Should Too. Professor Galbraith, welcome to Democracy Now! First, your assessment of the stimulus package that will be voted on today. Well, uh, the one that's voted on, being voted on in the Senate is distinctly inferior to the bill that was passed by the House a few days ago. Uh, it will pass the Senate, and we will now go to conference, and one hopes that the uh, compromise package will be an improvement over the Senate bill. There are things like school construction funds and uh, particularly flexible aid to states, which are in a terrific 
fiscal crisis right now uh, that were taken out of the Senate bill to placate this uh, small group of Republicans who came across uh, the two senators from Maine and Senator Specter. Uh, and uh, it's, it's hard to understand why they wanted, for example, school construction funds to be out of this bill. Uh, Senator Nelson gave an explanation of it last night, which was, uh, I think, very, very weak. Uh, but there will be a chance in the conference committee to improve the legislation. It will come out stronger. Uh, it will pass. It will be signed. And it will do some good. So that's uh, uh, progress is being made. I've heard Senator Collins saying if it changes much, she simply won't vote for it the next time. Well, you know, it's uh, the, 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 uh, in the nature of the Senate that a small group of people can, uh, and particularly with this division of power in the Senate, that a small group of senators uh, can hold the entire package to ransom if they choose. Uh, and uh, that's a reality, I suppose, that we have to live with. Uh, but it's very hard to see what their argument is for taking the particular tack that they are taking. To say it's, it's extremely clear that school construction, for example, creates jobs uh, in the United States, jobs that cannot be outsourced, jobs that immediately generate incomes in their community and leave valuable assets behind for generations of school children to, uh, to take advantage of. And the uh, flexible aid to — yes, go ahead. Professor Galbraith, what do you make of the new RNC chair, uh, Michael Steele, saying these aren't jobs, they're simply work? Well, it's, it's interesting that this uh, semantic philosopher has taken over the Republican National Committee. It's going to lead to some ex exceptionally uh, — historians will have fun with the, with the uh, logic chopping and sentence parsing that we're going to get from Mr. Steele, obviously, during his tenure. But otherwise, it's unimportant. I think the argument they're using about schools, well, because they want to make the stimulus package smaller, is th this could go to the states. Well, they have actually taken out funds uh, that would support state spending. And the collapse of revenues for state and local government is one of the most serious aspects of this crisis. It is what is causing the state of California to put its employees on furlough uh, as, as we speak. So we, we're looking here at something which, if not dealt with, will materially worsen the entire uh, economic picture in the United States. Uh, and I think what we're, what we're seeing I — I can't speak to the motives of uh, senators from Maine and Nebraska and so on, but I, I don't think that they are as sensitive as they should be to the very dire economic conditions facing the population in large states like California and New York. Professor Galbraith, do you think the stimulus package is large enough? Uh, the stimulus package is a very good bill, and it should pass. It will not, by itself, deal with the economic crisis that we're in. I think we should be very clear about that. Expectations for an early turnaround are, should not be, uh, you know, should not be very high. Um, a clear and major problem that we face is that the stimulus package is sized so that it will work only if the revival of credit, which is part of the tr plan that the Treasury uh, is announcing today, also works. And the problem is that that plan is still, I think, not well designed and is not likely to succeed. I think it actually, in many ways, misconceives the nature of the credit problem that we have and therefore is very unlikely to succeed at bringing about an early uh, revival of, of, of credit markets, of housing markets, of consumer credit markets, automobile loans, and the rest. And we can talk about that, but I think it's very important to understand that this spending package is really geared to the success of this other piece, and this other piece is much more problematic than the spending package is. We have to go to break, but we're going to come back to Professor James Galbraith, economist, professor of public affairs and government at University of Texas, his most recent book, Predator State how conservatives abandon the free market and why liberals should, too. Stay with us.
versus Britain in all directions. No safe zone, no cure, and no protection. No symptoms to find the signs of an infection. No vaccines, remedies, and no corrections. Quarantine your dreams and sell off our connections. Don't let them in, not a friend, not a reflection. Everybody's got it and wants you to have it next in. Don't accept them if you want to stay as an exception. No pill can heal the ill of this sickness. Some are still in doubt of its existence. Some call it forgiveness and some call it the vengeance. Some say it's an exit and some say it's an entrance. The poor say the rich have the cure. The rich say the poor are the source. Revolutionary say it's psychological war. Invented by the press just to have something to report. Some say the first...